This is The Playroom, funded by loving grandparents. It's a wicked awesome source of happiness for my children and misery for myself, since my children are still learning the meaning of the words clean up. So today, I'll be building a large storage desk that'll hold 10 IKEA storage cubes to add order to the madness. This time on the new Ricky Workshop. Went to my local Home Depot and I purchased two sheets of 4x8 Pure Bond plywood. The benefit of getting Pure Bond as opposed to the normal plywood is that it doesn't contain formaldehyde. So it won't off gas while in the room and slowly kill my children. It's a little bit more expensive, but worth it in my opinion, because I love my children. I had the Home Depot associate cut the four by eight sheets into two two by eight sheets. So this is 24 inches in width by eight feet long. And I'm going to use that 24 inches and I'm going to use all that. And I'm going to use all 24 inches. Now because my plywood's already cut to width, I'm going to go ahead and use my circular saw to cut it to length. Now before you handle your plywood, you want to get your powder out and powder your hands nicely so we can handle the plywood a little bit better. We don't want anything slipping out and getting splinters. Flawless execution, no splinters. Okay, now we're ready to cut. I'm gonna set my circular saw to cover the three quarter inch material. I have one by four that we're gonna use as a guide to keep our cut straight. Now we're going to go a little bit past 3 quarter inch so that the blade sticks out a little bit. Now we're going to measure the distance from the blade to the end of the metal guide to see where we need to set our wooden guide. Because the height of our storage desk is 26 and 3 eighths of an inch, we're going to add an inch and a half onto that and place our guide, which will be 27 and 7 eighths of an inch. So we're going to measure out 27 and 7 eighths of an inch. Make a mark. We're going to line up our guide board on our second mark, clamp it down and make our cut. Now one thing I forgot to do is accommodate for the blade thickness. I'm going to add an extra sixteenth of an inch to my second mark so that I'll be right on the money. Because my six two and a half by 16 inch pieces are going to be front facing, I want to make sure the grain goes long ways. So it'll look much better aesthetically. So I'm going to take this piece onto my table saw and cut it to width.
You really didn't think I could keep up that terrible accent for the entire video, did you? But let's give credit where credit is due. It is nowhere near as bad as Nicole Kidman's Irish accent in Far and Away. So I'll sleep better at night knowing that. I set my table saw's blade to a depth of 5 eighths of an inch, and I'll be making curves on all the outside pieces of my desk base, along with the inside two pieces of the two main cabinets. I'll be utilizing these curves with Rockler tabletop fasteners to attach my pine desktop. It was 15 degrees out when I was doing this, but I want to tell everyone you should not be wearing gloves while using tools that have any sort of rotation. If your glove gets caught in a spinning blade or piece of machinery, it's going to pull the rest of your hand in, and that's going to be the end of your sign language career and everything else that you need to use that hand for. Next up, I'll be cutting 5 16 inch deep slots for the IKEA storage bins to slide in and out. The first drawer slot goes 12 and 1 8 of an inch from the bottom, and the second drawer slot goes 22 and a quarter inches from the bottom. And these slots are 9 16 of an inch wide. If you have a dado blade, you should use that, or you could probably even use a router. But my workshop is actually a garage with very inexpensive machinery and tools. If you don't have a set of chisels, I strongly suggest you go out and grab some. They're really fun to use and really practical once you get them sharp. There's no better feeling than using a chisel. Maybe there's a couple other better feelings, but it's it feels good, man. It feels good. You can see there's some bumpiness and, and leftover wood. So I'm going to take some sandpaper and a flat edge and just finish routing out these slots. The slot for this middle divider is going to be placed four and five eighths of an inch from the bottom of this piece. Now that all the pieces are prefabricated, I'm going to set my Craig jig to accommodate three quarter inch material and pre-drill all of the pieces. There's going to be two pocket holes on each side of these small front facing pieces. I thought maybe I could put a pocket hole over top of a kerf, but that was a very silly thing for me to think. Do not put holes on top of kerfs if you plan on using those holes to hold hardware. Next up are the two bottom pieces of our cabinets, and I'm going to put pocket holes all around the perimeter of this. And now it's time for assembly. Everyone get in the gymnasium and sit on the floor and be uncomfortable for an hour. Grab your tight bond two wood glue and inch and a quarter pocket screws and let's assemble. Using the Craig right angle clamp really helps keep things aligned where you want them. When you apply glue, it tends to make the wood slide, so this helps keep it in place and keep your sanity in place. Now that the front facing pieces are attached, I'm going to attach the bottom piece. 
Yo, that feeling when your clamp is just big enough. Wipe any excess glue with a wet paper towel or shop rag. It will not take finish if there's glue. Twins, Basil, twins. On the inside of the two cabinets, I'll be installing the final two, two and a half by 16 inch front facing pieces. This is the bottom of the middle divider. It's 32 and three quarters by 24 inches and I'm going to pre-drill using my Craig jig to attach this to the two cabinets. I clamped the middle divider to the side of the first cabinet to use it as a guide so I know where to place my bottom part of the middle divider, which is eight and three quarters of an inch off of the top of the unit. This is a really nice trick to get it aligned quickly, straight, and true. I press it flush to the guide piece, square it out, glue and screw. Using the same middle divider, I repeat the same steps on the other side. The gap looks a little bit more than three quarters of an inch and I'm kind of worried, but it looks like there's enough where I can pull it together. It was a little bit flimsy in the back, so I decided to come in from the bottom with three screws just to make it secure. I'll be adding this back one by two, just for looks really, and I want the desktop to stick out three quarters of an inch around the entire perimeter. So that left about three quarters of an inch in the back. So this actually worked out really nicely. Form and function in the end. Using my circular saw and a one by four as a guide, I cut down the desktop to 69 and one quarter inches. Finally, I sanded down the top with some coarse sandpaper. I'm measuring out three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches so I can flip the desk over and get perfect placement when I go to pre-drill and attach the tabletop fasteners. I'll be using two tabletop fasteners in the front and four on each side of the cabinet. Once I get the general layout, I'm going to make a mark where I want to pre-drill. Using a ghetto depth guide using duct tape, I'm going to pre-drill where I made all of my marks. Once I'm finished pre-drilling, I'm going to use a screwdriver to hand screw in all of the tabletop fasteners. 